so now here what happens you see thread we make a new thread and we give the work in the constructor okay that new thread and i give it my runnable that is your work now when he does thread dot start so he will start the work that was defined in my runnable and not in his own thread class okay so this was important concept so now with this a thread comes here is the list of work in the queue so i assign him that okay do this t1 now i take it out from the queue person 1 some new tasks have come out okay so t3 t5 t7 person 2 comes he is free now just give him t3 okay so t3 is given to him okay and again when p1 becomes free so he will now take t5 also because now just provide him the runnable whichever task is there so then ask him thread dot start okay so this way it works fine and which one should we use so by now i think you must have understood that which one should we use when when you have a task you have a person and you want that okay he should just perform or uh, the thread if it should just perform just one task whatever you want that thread to do then use thread extend okay it from the thread and define the run there but if you want that your thread should be an all rounder okay then you should implement the runnable method okay so that's there then coming next now some pitfalls okay you are an expert in defining classes you are happy with the object oriented programming okay so you are a master of object oriented programming okay so now you say that okay we have a run method okay we have a run method in the class thread and i'm smart that is public also so why not just write like this and then do thread dot run okay because thread dot run basically runs whatever was there in the run method this should work and you say that okay in fact it will do also the same work so for example if in the run it was public void run i'm talking about the extending it from the thread class we had something like this where i did system dot out dot print ln and i said hello void and when you run it you get this printed out so as a starter so you will say that okay yes fine this is also working fine and i have used the object oriented method i called this the method but what is the problem you are the manager okay you thought that your employee who is free here you have three employees let's say under you you are doing now thread dot run it means the manager who has a crown he is doing that work okay so he is performing that task and these three are just sitting on and relaxing okay so they are not doing the work so if you want them to do the work then you should do what you should call thread dot start okay so that is important thread dot start then only they will have their own execution here and then they will call this one but if you do thread dot run you are doing the work so that's not something you are trying to do okay so this is there and some more things that are important is that one thing that we want to write is thread dot current thread let's say lot of threads are running okay lot of threads are running and i somehow want to know which of them so they are all running parallelly and java virtual machine is the scheduler okay so it schedules so this is thread 1 this is thread 2 thread 
thread n so it schedules and you don't know how it schedules okay so you have no control on that so what happens i don't know that okay which one is running now but i somehow want to know which one is running so at that point of time there is a static method in the thread class that is thread dot current thread okay so this current thread when you get so it will give you the whichever thread is running currently by the processor so now if you want to get the name of it so just call get name so you will get the name of that thread okay so this helps you in identifying okay and also what happens is that in the run method of your runnable interface when you implement that so you don't have the you can't access that methods of the thread okay like get name you cannot access there so in the runnable interface if i try to implement the run so there you cannot write like okay get name okay because this is the method of thread and you are not that class so what will you do now you have to use this thread dot current thread dot get name in order to print the name of the thread okay and that's many time used for logging purpose so this was there then let's see so this is the end of the thread basic instruction how to start a thread what a thread does and it does lot of interesting things okay one last thing that i would like to tell you is that let's see okay i have no space so here itself in different color i will tell you so one very important question that came to me i have only one processor okay so let's clean this i have got only one processor now what happens is you have got many threads t1 t2 t3 t5 let's say t4 t5 so what happens if you are doing the work so your jvm or your operating system they will just allocate the processor okay so this is the processor which does the work so thread 1 will come it will do its work so that processor will be sliced the time of the processor will be sliced to let's say t1 was given some time then t2 then t4 then t3 then t5 so like this they all get some time so this is time division multiplexing then again t1 t3 something like that it goes on so slice of the time of the computer processor is given to each thread but then you say what is the use means you are not getting any benefit in terms of time so parallel computing when you do so you thought you will save a lot of time like with the example initially given okay but does it really help if you have just one processor so when we were doing the sum of 1 10000 numbers we made in fact let's say 10 threads were there so they were all adding their numbers and if it was just one processor so they will be all using the original one single processor all the thread so is there any benefit in fact there is no benefit and in fact it will take more time if it was just one processor because changing contexts of the threads also take time so where is the benefit if we have just one processor okay so is there any benefit and the answer is yes a big yes and why is that so because we have many functions or methods like wait so blocking calls okay so we have blocking calls so like sleep okay wait receive okay so we are waiting for some if we are let's say a server okay and i am waiting for some request okay i am the server and i am waiting for some request 
and at the same time we also have to do something else so one thread let's say one thread is there and at the server which is waiting okay so it, this is waiting for request so this is waiting for request one thread is there that is doing some work okay that is maintaining the database maintaining database so what happens if this waiting thread is all the time waiting and in a while loop so all your cpu is still getting exhausted okay it is getting used while doing nothing okay so it will be a kind of while while request is there so i'm just waiting in that while loop again and again but what happens if i wait here it means that thread is now not doing any work and it is not using the processor okay so at these moments these threads helps even in case of a single processor so that is the importance so i hope this gives you some idea about what is thread what it does and we will look at what the threads do in in the practical we will look at some java code to see what they do so i hope you like this video thanks a lot